Wait, we start at number five. Oh, we'll work our way down to one. Five. Shaking my head. I'm sorry. I've listened to maybe two episodes. Uh, this has been I a rough one, ladies works. and gentlemen. It's been rough. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 92 of the Scruffcast. I'm John. And I'm Dan. You're not Dan, you imposter. <laughs> yes, the listeners may uh, be surprised to see Dan is not on the podcast this week. I've had instead my longtime, used to be girlfriend, now fiance, Taryn, fill in for him this week. Welcome, Taryn. Thank you. Um, as the whole world is sort of, you know, quarantining themselves away and isolating, me and Dan were like, eh, maybe we should just uh, skip out on doing the podcast this week. So we're like, mm. I thought, I know everyone else out there is also bored, quarantined away on their coronacations, if you will. So I got to deliver the goods. I got to provide them with a podcast. So here I am, and Taryn's filling in. Thanks for being on the show, Taryn. Oh, thanks for having me. You're one of, you are the fourth guest we've ever had no fifth oh okay the um, fifth other person we've ever had on the show and i'm the first female you are but we don't see the gender or the color on the scruff cast it's uh that's just how we roll okay so we did get a couple of listener emails this week a couple of people who wrote into scruffcast at gmail.com just like you guys out there can i'll read the the first one here the subject is hey team Oh, and as usual, whenever there's somebody guest hosting or a guest, we don't give them a copy of the notes. So Sharon's just running blind here, and I'm just uh, just along for the ride, and I'm controlling the show. Hey, team, is the subject. Happy Monday, or is it? This COVID-19 crap is out of control. It really is ruining everything that is, go- that is going on. 2020 is like a sick joke. We're almost four months into the year, and a world war almost happened, and now this... It feels like we are living in a movie. It's creepy. Also, let's not forget, Australia was on fire a couple years ago. A couple or no, a month ago, right, Taryn? You just you're just nodding I mean, at I, me. You you gotta I talk mean, out sure to get into it was the show. Also on fire a couple of years ago too. Yes, but, but on a, most recently, mo- yes, a couple months on a, ago. on a large scale. Like what is it like a billion I mean, animals? Probably died? still is. Probably, but yeah. Corona came in and took us thunder away. Mm-hmm. Uh, the listener goes on to say, I forgot to email in my top five Netflix originals, which you guys may remember was the top five from two episodes ago. What is your top five uh, Netflix series or movies? Number five, Spinning Out. It's a new show that only has one season so far, but I loved it. It has the actress from one of my favorite shows, Skins. Now, I will have the listeners know that this show looks terrible. I don't know how it could make anybody's top five list. And also... Taryn was a background extra on one of the episodes. I was. Episode one. The first, the pilot. I've been like the first scene. The first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's only like five, ten minutes into it. Yeah. The girl's skating and she falls over and everyone goes, eh. And then you can see Taryn sitting in the crowd. Yeah. But if you don't, if for some reason, I guess, well, not all the listeners. Well, some of the listeners won't know me, right? Obviously. So mm-hmm. they, and they won't know you or they won't know what you look like. You've been mentioned plenty of time on the podcast, but this is the first time you're actually on here. So yes, Taryn was in that show. Yeah. Although it looks brutal, so I'm surprised. Well, it's on I mean, list. it was like a 12, 14 hour day, so no, I, I mean, hope that little moment was worth it, despite whatever the content quality might be of the actual show. I don't know. It looks pretty janky, but I made this listener's top five list. Number four. Ooh, this list is all over the place. The Circle. I have got to say, it was rather captivating to watch, and my fiancé and I really enjoyed it and found ourselves rooting for two people participating. Not sure if either of you have watched, but it was different, that's for sure. Have you watched The Circle? I saw the film that it was based off of. Wait, what? It's based off of a film? Yeah. It uh, came out, like, I don't know, two, three years ago. Are we thinking of the same show? The one where it's like that social media thing? Yeah, it's with uh, Tom Hanks and Emma Watson. That's not the same thing. Yes, it is. What? I'm... Like ninety eight percent sure. I remember that, that movie, which it. I never watched. I remember the trailer looked. But interesting. it's it. I mean, that's what the movie's about, right? It's about social media. I don't know. I never watched that. the movie. Um, 
I did watch like the first ten minutes of the reality show. Yeah, which that is we're what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I wasn't captivated by it. Well, this listener says it was rather captivating, and their fiance and them were really enjoyed it. So that's pretty surprising. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't even make that connection that it was related to the show or the movie too. Number three, Big Mouth. It is such a funny show and well made. Definitely a different concept for a cartoon. This one I've seen. I only I watched the first season. Love Big Mouth. Uh, how many seasons are there now? Uh, I think three. Three, really? I only yeah. watched the first one. Yeah, and I think I heard it got renewed for two more. Does it yeah. get better after season one or worse? No, it gets better. It gets better. Well, after? I mean, I thought season one was great, and I feel like it just kind of follows that same traction. All right. Um, but yeah, it's I love Big Mouth. Number two, Mind Hunter. I've always seen this one, but it, like on Netflix, but I've never watched it. Such a great show, and it is based on true events on how that part of the police force came to be. It was such an addicting show to watch. Two seasons at the moment, potential for a third, I believe. Okay. Do you know anything about Mind Hunter? Well, I know that Jonathan Garoff is on it, and I love Jonathan Garoff. You're, you're losing the listeners. Number honorable I mention. I met him once. Uh, uh, Sorry. Let's move on. Okay. All right. Honorable mention. Uh, who is it? Like, there's only one Jonathan the listeners care about, and it's me. So stop trying to bring in these other ones. Well, you asked me what I thought about Mindhunter, so. Yeah, about the show, not about this jabron. Okay. All right. Honorable mention. Someone great. Surprisingly, the only movie on my list. I don't know what this is. Oh, I think that that's a movie with Gina Rodriguez. I don't know who that it's is. It's like a rom-com. Okay. Well. Uh, Jane the Virgin. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know the movie. All right, number one. Conversations with a Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes. Absolutely amazing little docuseries. I already knew a lot about the cases and his murders and escapes, but it was very bone-chilling to actually hear real tapings and videos of his trials. Uh, I saw a couple ep- episodes of it, and yeah, it was actually really good. No, it was pretty interesting. Hard pass for me. But it's good, though. Yeah, that's fine. I just true crime is a little bit too true for but me. But I feel like like a lot of people are like way into true crime. Like true crime, true crime podcast is like a huge like subject. Yeah, to have their own. I think it's its own category on the oh in different stores, like on Apple Podcasts, where we're rated under the uh, we're classified under the comedy category. So listen, who's out there? Go give us five stars and uh, leave us a nice review. Tell us what you think of Taryn's performance on the podcast. Uh, oh, the email goes on to say, uh, the movie did not have much of the information. Cor- oh, no, no sorry. Uh, number one was the conversations with the killer, the Ted Bunny tapes. And the listener goes on to say, Daniel put extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile, the movie, on his list. And I have got to say, that movie was terribly done, although Zach did an amazing job acting once again. The movie did not have much of the information correct or portrayed properly, even if they wanted to tell the story from his girlfriend's perspective. Dan! This is two weeks in a row a listener has written into the show and complained about your list. Last week, Chris ripped you about Spencer Confidential. And then this week, this listener is ripping you about putting uh, the Ted Bundy movie on your list. So, I don't know. A list seemed okay to me, but the listeners, they disagree. What have you, uh, a listener goes on to say here, What have you and your fiancé been up to since social distancing has now been mandated in Ontario? Are you and Daniel taking a break from doing the podcast together? Uh, we'll, we'll get back to those questions. I'll just wrap up the email. Due to social distancing, my movie nights with my best friend have been canceled, which also means I cannot do my bridesmaid proposals and will have to wait. Hope you guys are having a safe social distancing period, and let's hope this shit goes away. So what have me and my fiancé, that's you, Taryn, been up to since social distancing has now been mandated? Well, everyone's in this corona panic, but I can work from home, so that's how I've been spending my days. What have you been up to? Have you been spending your social distancing days, Taryn? Well, I got temporarily laid off. Yes. So um, I have been spending majority of my time taking online BuzzFeed classes. quizzes? <laughs> oh. I mean, there have been a few here and there. But no, I've actually been pretty productive. I've been taking some online writing classes, which I've been really enjoying because a lot of... Uh, these uh, resourceful sites have made their content free 
and accessible during this time. So I've kind of made myself a little uh, back to school schedule. All right. That seems like a productive use of your time. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that was the end of the email. Uh, what else did they say? Are me and Daniel taking a break from doing the podcast together? No. Well, I mean, we're not doing it together this week. Who knows what the world will be like a week from now? And who knows what the world will be like in two weeks from now? But we'll just keep the show rolling and, uh, you know, we'll go week by week, right? Is it worth risking the pandemic to get Dan back on the show? Depends how Terry does filling in. It might be. It might be. We might get emails next week saying, please bring Dan back. Taryn was terrible. Or we might get emails saying, you know, oh, Taryn was actually pretty good. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. We got another email to scruffcast at gmail.com, just like you guys out there can. Subject is no subject. I'm surprised this listener didn't put a subject because they know on the show we hate getting no subject emails. Maybe it's just spam. Well, we'll take what we can get on this show. Hey, Scruffcast team. Since it seems like everyone will be in isolation for a while, what do you guys have planned to keep busy? Any suggestions for the rest of your listeners? I plan on fixing my iPad that magically stopped working yesterday. Just my luck, right? Hope everyone is staying COVID-free. Sent from the better part of the Scruffcast, Dan. So, Dan, I gotta say, you put no subject in the email? You know that we hate getting emails with no subject. Yeah, he definitely won't be back next week. Oh, and Taryn's been on the show for 11 minutes and she's already wants to take your spot. I'm an opportunist. Uh, and then this is this is the worst part. Hmm. P.S. John, I have to continue to watch Love is Blind without you. I hope you understand. That's actually oh. one of the reasons I was willing to risk the pandemic this week. Wow, that's a betrayal. That he won't even betrayal. He won't even watch that with me. No, you're talking to the listeners, saying I won't watch it with you. No, I won't. And I still won't. This, but this is pretty upsetting. But I'll have to watch it without you, Dan. I, I, I do understand, though. Depending on how long this pandemic goes, we don't know just how long it could be till we find out what happens with Barnett and the rest of the ladies on the show. Uh, and then he has a note for Taryn here. Taryn, mm. good luck on your first guest host. Hopefully you do well enough that I don't have to come back. Well, 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 we shall see about that. We oh, shall well, thank see. you. So what do we have planned to keep busy? And any suggestions for the rest of the listeners? What do you have planned to keep busy over this... Uh, little coronation, if you will. Well, you I said mean, you're taking those classes. I'm taking those classes. What else? You're going to start doing yoga? Yeah, I'm going to start doing some kind of form of exercise. I, I just lobbed you at the softball right there. I said yoga. Then you could say, yeah, yoga. I'm supposed to say, yeah, yoga? No, I mean, you got a yoga mat. Oh, I have a yoga mat. Yeah, yeah so I thought you were going to start doing yoga. Oh, I'm going to. Oh, when listeners, that starts I don't know and about begins, this. I don't up know. in the air right now. What do you mean it's up in the air? What, the, the pandemic goes away next week? Oh, we don't need yoga anymore. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. It'll happen at some point. Um, what do I have planned? Well, I got to work, obviously, during the days. But I don't know. Uh, playing video games, watching stuff on Netflix. Going for the a brief, you know, brisk stroll around the block, trying to avoid contact with everybody. Sipping my tea. It's, uh, yeah, it's been, it is what it is. Um, what do I suggest for the listeners? Well, I gotta give a shout out to Tiger King on Netflix. If I got something to suggest to the listeners, you guys have to go and watch this docuseries on Netflix. It's seven episodes. I'm only three episodes in. But god damn, this show is wild. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. But it's about the sort of community of like big cat owners. And I'm not talking about like fat cats, okay? I'm talking about like tigers and lions and... Bears. And bear. well, there's a, oh a bear is in a cat. There are bears. There was a bear. There was a, a bear, bear at a, some point. A bear is not a big cat. And I was making a joke, and you just didn't catch on. What? what? Lions and tigers and bears. You got to know the audience of the show. Okay. I don't even know what you're talking about. You're getting a little too bougie on here. The Wizard of Oz. What? I thought. Oh, I was thinking planes, trains, and automobiles. That's the Steve. Why would thing. you? Well, because it's something, something, and something. Okay. Okay. Anyways, this show is wild as all hell. So it follows this guy, Joe Exotic. Okay, that's which like 
he to changes, begin, his name alone just like which is awesome. sets the standard. He's he's got a, a mullet that's like dyed blonde. It's awesome. He goes by Joe Exotic. And for some reason, the mullet, talking about his mullet, was almost making Terrence spit her tea out over here. She finds it hilarious. And it's just wild. The show has it all. It has romance. It has potential murder. It has polygamy. It has injuries. Deaths. It's all, it's it's just insane. And as I watch the show, I'm like, okay, I see where it's going. Then it just ratchets up episode after episode. You, you guys got to watch this. Yeah. It's like, it starts off very much like, Something along the lines of my big fat gypsy wedding, and then it. What's my big like, fat gypsy wedding for the listeners who don't know what that is? It's a it's a TLC program. I don't think it's on anymore. Did uh, get that chronicled uh, weddings in the gypsy community in the UK and the United <clears throat> States. Um, but yeah, I would say it's like my big fat gypsy wedding. With a dash of Animal Planet, and then it just kind of turns into Dateline. I think you're like underselling it. I think underselling it's, yeah, it. Yeah, it's well, like if okay, if I was listening to a podcast and someone described something as like my big fat gypsy wedding esque, I'd be like, eh. no, this this is wild. You guys, uh, it can't be described. It, I, don't I don't know. Okay, well, how I'm would also, you how I'm would you describe familiar. it? Then. It's an enigma. You have to watch it for yourself. Okay. That's hey. That's what I'm saying. Um. Yeah. So that's what I would suggest to pass the time. You guys can play video games. Animal Crossing just recently came out. That's the new hotness. Everybody's playing that on their Nintendo Switch. Uh. Any any other ideas? Any other ideas, Taryn? No. No. Uh, for the listeners. All right. Well, we didn't really have too much in the notes. I mean, we never really have much when we come into the show. But I got one little gripe here. Why am I getting emails about the coronavirus from every company that I've ever interacted with in any way? Have you been experiencing this, Terry? Yeah. Public Mobile is sending me an email. You talk to me about uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Why do I need an email... From Public Mobile about the coronavirus. I, I, they don't have physical stores to go into. It's a cell phone provider service. I'm not going to get it through the airwaves unless you believe in some like 5G conspiracy theories, which I have an uncle or two on Facebook who post stuff like that. So I don't know why I'm getting emails from everybody. It's aggravating me. Well, I think if, for example, when Mobile didn't send out a notice, there would be a handful of customers who are like, why well, haven't we heard about your policy? Right? <sighs> That's true. So they're just That's putting it one. out there just to, you know. Just cover be, their ass. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's fair. I feel like it's probably just like a PR thing. Like everybody else is doing it. I guess we jump on the bandwagon. Hey, I'm talking about them on the show right now, aren't I? Yeah. There are millions of Free listeners. Free ads. Yeah. Man, I can't wait until the show gets big enough that we can read ads. It would be awesome. All right, well, that was pretty much all we had in the notes before we jump into this week's top five, 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 five. Uh, might be a bit of a shorter podcast this week. We'll see how long the top five takes. No, because, wait, wait, Ter- for the listeners, Terrence, give me a look of like, what? We're cutting the, the podcast short? No, I'm just saying based on how far we're into the show, before we get to the top five, you know, I'm, I'm a natural. I've got 91 and a half episodes under my belt. I have a feel for the podcast, you know? Although... One thing I did forget about is that last week, our top five, which no one wrote in to answer, but uh, was the top five items you'd bring with you if you were stuck in quarantine. And the scenario that we laid out was, we'll say that you're like stuck quarantining in a hotel room. So you've got internet provided, food provided, uh, electricity, right? Your your clothes and toiletries don't count because obviously everybody puts those on the list. So Taryn, I want to hear what your top five quarantine items will be. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. Number one, my laptop. Wait, we start at number five. Oh, we'll work start our way at down number to one. five? Shaking my head. I'm sorry. I've listened to maybe two episodes. Uh, this has been I a rough one, ladies and gentlemen. It's been rough. Um, yes, we start at number five. And I, I'm disappointed that... Can you believe this? 
My fiance doesn't even listen to the podcast that gets recorded in the studio in her own home. But to be fair, Anthony had guest hosted on the show twice and he never listens. Well, I have two up on him, so. Yes, that is true. All right, so we start at number five. Okay. And we'll work our way down to a one. Oh, what okay. could it be? And then throw your honorable mention in there. Oh, I didn't two. even put an honorable mention. <laughs> well, no, nah, you don't have to put an honorable mention for okay. like when you're just going over I'll the last week. I'll think of one list. as I'm reading. Sure. Okay. So you're number five. Number five. Uh, EI, which is employment insurance. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> for uh, people who have been temporarily laid off. Uh, I'm waiting on my code to come in via snail mail. Yeah, so. it's, it's pretty crazy. Apparently 27,000... Well, th- we're talking obviously in Canadian numbers if anybody's listening mm-hmm. outside of Canada. 27,000 people applied up to this point last year. And then this year, half a million people have already applied. Which yeah. I'm sure the numbers are even greater than that now. But Yeah. All right. Uh, number four. Uh, you'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> Iron supplements. Iron supplements. <laughs> So, uh, for the listeners out there, uh, fun fact, I'm anemic, and uh, I should be taking iron supplements, and I do most of the time, but I... I most of the time? Well, You're not taking them all the time? I haven't taken them in a while. Why? I just keep forgetting. How do you keep forgetting? <laughs> um, but... Going uh, on this podcast has not been good for our relationship. But part of our... What, what did you call it? A quarantine-cation? Coronacations, whatever. Coronacation. Yeah. Coronacation. Uh, I want to start taking my iron supplements again. And I feel like because you can't really go outside and it's been pretty gloomy here recently. There's no sun. Yeah, it's been a little. Yeah, I feel gloomy. like my iron supplements might make a comeback. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, number three. Uh, I don't own one, uh, but I used one recently, and that is a TENS machine. What is that for the listeners? You know so about? a TENS machine is essentially uh, this little device uh, with cables and these, I don't know what you call them. They're like those sticky pads. Yeah. Okay. And you can um, stick them onto different parts of your body, like your shoulder or your arm or your back or something, anywhere that you have tension uh, yeah. or soreness, and it'll send electric currents to that spot. So, like, makes your muscles spasm. The first, Essentially, yeah. The first ten, TENS machine I ever was familiar with was Dr. Hose. The big yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's my like dad the godfather of, of TENS machines. Yeah. I remember my dad had one. Zhang, he had one of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, when I was a kid. At first, it feels terrible. And then eventually, uh, it feels weird to not have it on. And I feel like because this is such a, a tense time... The tens, tens machine, machine. Ah, yeah. Yeah. and tens is like a T E N S is like an acronym for something, right? I think so. I think so too, but I yeah. don't remember what it is. We'll uh, just say it's short for tension. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. You're listed under the comedy category. Yeah, that's why we're listed under the common comedy category. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Coming out of the pocket and qu- giving quips on a. To the host on his own I'm show. I'm not. It's just constructive criticism. Anyways. Dan, please come back next week. <laughs> uh, number two, board games. And quarantine by yourself, though. In the scenario that we laid out. Oh, am I? Okay. Uh, I'll still take them. Because <laughs> <laughs> my favorite kind of my favorite kind of board game is trivia. So you just read the cards games. to yourself. I would just read them and quiz myself. Fair enough. Fair right? enough. So that'd Did, be fine. And now I need an honorable mention, right? Before I name my number one. Yeah. Which I kind of spoiled earlier. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh. Uh. If you, hey, if you don't have one, you don't no, have no, one. No, 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 no. Um. If you don't have one, you don't have one. I okay. My honorable mention. Now this is not a necessity. No. But this is something probably that would help make it didn't me need feel to be a little necessities. bit more. Okay. I brought my Nintendo Switch. Okay. I would probably bring my makeup. But your quarantine's inside. No, but just to make me feel a little bit more human. Why do you need makeup to feel human? The makeup industry is like a big sham. It's not a sham. It is a sham. What now? Whose side are you on? Me or big makeup? <laughs> big makeup. Yeah. Uh, no, I just bring my makeup. So maybe I could practice getting better at makeup. 
And also, also, I don't want to go like, who knows how long this could be. This could be like 18 months of quarantine. And then I'm going to forget how to do my makeup. And then once this is all over, I'm going to go do my makeup again. I'm going to forget how to do it. So you got to keep up with it, right? That's why it's an honorable mention because it's not an essential. Isn't it like riding a bike? How do you forget? I don't know. Obviously, I've never, you know, put on makeup. But like, I don't know how it works. You just putting makeup onto your face yeah, how do you there's, forget there's different techniques and stuff it's, a, it's, a, it's all a big shame as a person who doesn't wear makeup you just don't understand i guess not anyways uh and then number one is my laptop yes that was also my number one as well yeah i just figured it's so versatile well because you have access to pretty yeah. much everything on there, thanks for not so. bringing your phone so that you can't text your fiance i'll message you on message Facebook. me what if i'm busy what if the internet networks go down the cell towers will be the last bastion of humanity we have well forget about me i made sure to bring my phone okay but, all right so now it's on to this week's top five 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 so i don't know i guess sort of keeping up with the quarantine sort of spending a lot of time inside sort of theme uh this week's top five is hobbies you wish you could get into but you never have i don't know if we did this one or not i don't think so i think it was a question to ponder one day but who knows who cares it's the end of the world we're trying things new all right hobbies you wish you could get into but never have would you like to go first taryn or would you like me to go first uh, well, as the host, I, I'll leave that honor up to you. You know what? I'll go first. Just because. Just because. All right. My number five, learning a second language. Now, I had a hard time deciding, like, what could actually be classified as a hobby. Right? I'm like, is learning a second language a hobby? I don't know. I guess. I guess anything kind of can be a hobby, really. But Well, big cats. Big, hey, yeah, for some, well, that's a lifestyle. You got, you guys that's gotta what they check, said. That's what they said in, they the, in the series. You guys got to check out the show. It's wild. Like, there's people from different zoos and different parts of the world are like, oh, the, the what was the, it? The monkey people. The, the, no, it wasn't. It was something wackier than that. Than no, it monkeys. was. It was was it mon- monkeys? Yeah. It's like, oh, the monkey people? Like, the people who. Stay away from monkeys? Them. Like, oh, they're. Yeah, you don't want to mess there's with that. There's different groups and communities based off of which mammal. Which, yeah. It's, anyways, that's totally unrelated yeah. to the language thing, but. Learning a second language. And if I had to pick one, I mean, Spanish is the most useful because it's used in so many countries. But I feel like the most interesting one would be Japanese, just because mm-hmm. it'd be cool. Then I could import video games from Japan, play them early. But I feel like learning to read a language is totally different from learning to speak a language. But apparently Japanese is pretty tough to learn, too. Yeah. So that'd be my number five, learning okay. a new language. Okay. Your number five, Terry. We start at five, work our way down to one. Okay. My number five, five. Uh, would be uh, podcasting. Oh, I don't need to do that as a hobby I've never got into because I already do it. Well, there you go. Yeah, I thought it would always be cool to have a podcast that's... Uh, I feel like a jab at the Scruffcast is coming right up here. No, 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 no. That's tailored to my interests. See, Might be kind of cool. That's the beauty of the Scruffcast, tailored to everybody's interests because yeah. the show is... I always say to the listeners, the show is like AA. What you put in is what you get out, right? Mm-hmm. If you guys write in, you engage with the show, then you get more bank. We always say, share with your friends. Is Granny stuck in the home? You know, and you don't want to go visit her all the time. Tell her about the scruff cast, and she's like, you know, getting visitors. Well, you can't. You can't visit Granny so in the home exactly, right now. which is why now is the most important time there's ever been to share the scruff cast with your loved ones. Mm-hmm. If you guys are quarantined, write into the share with your friend, your your loved ones. Write into the show, and then we'll read your email, and then your loved ones will hear it and they'll be like, "Oh, little Timmy's still alive. Corona hasn't got him." Yep, doing mm-hmm. God's work, Scruffcast. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but um, all right. That was. Uh, what would your podcast be? Oh, um, I don't know. Something related to the entertainment industry. Like theater and stuff like that? Theater, film, something like that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I see. You get one little taste of podcasting, hmm? Huh? No, you get, no. Oh. This is something I've... Dan, you better worry. Uh, her eyes are oh, widening right now. She's yeah, have you been adjusting your chair? Yeah. To suit me? You, you know, it's like when somebody uh, takes your car and then they adjust the seat in the mirrors. And you're like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Your Ruta. seat's never going to feel the same again. No. 
All right, that was your number five. My number four, stand-up comedy. Now, why are you laughing? I haven't even started because my comedy. Because you're so good that it's already getting me going. You're the worst. Uh, so the only note I have here is, uh, I'm too much of a little bitch. I'll be too scared. <laughs> but, like, it's such a shame because I'm just so funny. I would just kill it at stand-up comedy. Shout out to our friend Nathan. Uh, Pat Earns, you may know him as. He does the intro and outro track to the podcast every week. Uh, he does stand-up comedy as well. Pretty funny guy. Uh, but, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I, I got it. But, I, you know, the world just can't see my talents because right. I'm uh, too much of a little bitch. Well, maybe in another lifetime. Maybe. Your number four, Taryn. Okay. Uh, my number four, uh, travel. Is that a hobby? That's a hobby. I know some people who are like traveling all over the place like it's <laughs> it sounded so stupid no i know it's just funny the way you said it. they're just traveling all over they're the just place. traveling all over i travel all over too i would get on I'd get on the train i'd travel to work and i'd get off the, on the train <laughs> get to the dinner travel back no I, I think it's no there are some people who are like addicted to traveling i think i mean hey if they i have, have that wonderlust and they just go all over the place they somehow find the money or put themselves into debt and they don't really think about it and they just go and i kind of wish not that i would put myself into debt but that i had the resources to just kind of go where i wanted to not currently but well i mean like if i didn't have a job and a fiance to worry about i would just be see ya wouldn't want to be i'd be traveling yeah, same. all over but alas, that's not how Alas, our lives we in. found each other. It's been amazing. All right. Uh, my number three, create a YouTube channel. So this is always one. This is one I've always wanted to do. And what type of channel would I make in particular? I don't know. I I kind of like the idea of those channels that make like video essays, right? Mm. Um, they're they're pretty popular in the video game space, if you will. Um, you know, they'll break down like the story of. You know, how a game was made or like looking at the history of stuff. I don't know. Maybe since I'm so funny, that could be my avenue for comedy, right? You could do stand-up bits. No, no. I mean like a PewDiePie-esque type thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I had to, it would be, but you know, video essays about video game or video games or space. Or kick it with what me and Dan know best, the top tens. We love the top tens. Well, there you go. So that would be my uh, number three. You're number three, Dan. Uh, my number three, I would really love to, not master, but learn a style of dance. Okay, Doki. What type of <laughs> dance are you talking about? Because I've seen your dancing. Uh-huh. Well, actually, like barely, because you are always a curmudgeon now when it comes to the dance floor. Yeah, I don't like to dance in social situations, like at a wedding or a party or anything like that okay, that's but just if you're not, not for at a me. wedding or a party where else do you dance like performative dance Ugh, that's okay. the worst kind of dance why is it the worst kind of dance anyways i don't know it makes you think of like shen yun the thing that chinese uh like ballet performance i keep seeing commercials for here well in i don't think i could ever be as good as them but i would like to learn just a style of dance to just say that I can, and it's a good form of exercise. That is true. What kind of dance, though? Uh, tap, I think. Tap dancing yes. in the twenty twenty. Yes. Who tap, who tap dances now? Tap dancers. <laughs> yeah, and that's about it. No, ah. I I took I actually took tap dancing in college, and I was not very good at it. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot of math when it comes to tap dancing, and if really? there's yes, because you have to count. I mean, there, I mean, you have to count dance in general, but there's, yeah, like there's, it's all about rhythm, right? Yeah. So I've actually recently was looking at tap classes to see like how much they would cost and stuff. And now might be a good time to do it because there's a lot of free classes online. So maybe I could find a free tap dancing class. I don't have tap dancing shoes though. Can't you just use regular shoes? You can, but you don't get the... The sound. I feel like that's better for my sanity if you're trying to learn to I'm tap just dancing. Gonna, I'm just going to scotch I'm tape gonna hear from coins the other side. to my feet. Yeah. You'll always hear me. Driving me nuts. Yeah. Walking down the hall. 
I don't know. I just feel like if I was walking down the street and there's two buskers and one of them was a tap dancer and one of them was anything else, I'd probably give the other guy my loony. Why? Uh, Tap dancing is just... I I don't think it's ever been mentioned on the Scruffcast before. I don't think it ever will be mentioned again. Okay, well... But you do you, boo. All right. That was your number three? That was my number three. Number two, music. So I would like to... So I have an acoustic guitar that sits here in the studio. And it just collects dust. It only ever gets used when Dan comes over, when we do the podcast. While I'm editing, he'll usually, you know, play around with the guitar. So I feel like you know, that'd be good. Uh, that'd be that'd be a nice hobby to learn. You know, keep you entertained. Um, or I, I would also like to let you know learn at like producing like electronic music. I remember I signed up a long time ago for a dead mouse taught master class that I barely ever looked at, but I feel like that'd be a good one. Okay. What's your number two, Taryn? Uh, the same. Music. Although as well. I was to a go with more your tap specific, dancing. and I put instrument. Well, how is that more specific? Because you could you could learn music in like a general sense. Like music theory? Sure. No, but the, how I know is that more specific? Meant, I just but then they clearly gave the guitar example. Yeah. You're just coming out to fight on the podcast. I am. Well, what instrument? If you want to be specific. Uh uh I've always really appreciated the violin. The violin is an interesting one. I like the sound of the violin. So yeah. I think I would like to learn the violin. You should learn the saxophone. That's such a cool instrument. <laughs> uh, sure. How many people know how to play the saxophone? Not many. You just whip out the sax. <laughs> oh, be awesome. Okay. Um, now, my honorable mention. So I had a tough time here trying to distill it down into one hobby so what i have written here is some sort of outdoor type hobby right like maybe hiking or fishing or you know some sort of uh you know outdoorsmanism if that's even a word right you know i've been fishing before like as a kid i like fishing long time listeners will remember the story me and dan told about the first time we went fishing together and we uh caught the fish and couldn't get it off the hook (laughs) so we just cast the fish back out there again as it was it was a rough one. But, yeah, I don't know. You ever watched that show River Monsters? Have I? Yeah. No. Oh, I love that show. What's the guy's name? Jeremy something? It's like Jeremy Gills or something. It's like, oh. I, I could be That's totally making great. that. Gills I know. fish. I know, but I could yeah. I could be totally making that up. Like anyways, Joe Exotic. Yeah. But, yeah, maybe, maybe that wasn't, maybe he just changed his name. I don't know. It might not even be Gills. Okay. Yeah, Joe Exotic is his, like, stage name, if you will. All right. That's my honorable mention. What's yours, Jane? Uh, so my honorable mention is one of your... It was something else, and then I changed it, because when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, right, I forgot about that. Uh, stand-up comedy. Ah. So I, for the listeners, I, I do improv and sketch comedy, um, but I've never done stand-up before, and I've always wanted to try it, not to pursue it, because I don't think I have enough mileage to get me very far, but I've always wanted to at least try, I don't know, an open mic night and just do mm-hmm. like a two-minute set or um, or take a class. And just to try it, just to say that I, I've done it. Yeah. Because well, I like stand-up. Why would you even need to test it out that way when you're engaged to the barometer of comedy? Which listeners may know mean I have perfect comedy. Right. So I'll tell you if it's funny or not. Okay. I mean, I I obviously it would all be funny. I have tested out jokes on you before. And what do I say? You always say good job. I have to say good job. See, this is the trouble. This is the trouble. You cannot ask for honest feedback from your significant other because even if you do something and it's shitty, I'll say good job, babe. And if you do something, and then it's actually like, wow, but that was not, a really good job. I'll say good job, and it's the same. So then you'll never not know. Not great in your opinion, though. What do you mean, not great? Because it, what you think is not great might be great to somebody else and vice versa. Yeah, and the, if I don't think it's great and those other people think it's great, then you know what they are? Jabroni of the week. Okay. That's what they are. All right. All right. Uh, my number one. So... 
I've always wanted to do collecting of some sort. Specifically, now this kind of goes with you need the space, right? You need a you know a good size house. You need to hunker down, sell some roots, so you know you're not gonna start collecting stuff and then gonna have to box it all up and haul that shit somewhere else when you move, right? Uh, so if I could collect something, it would be like retro video games, right? I always see there's a lot of YouTube channels. People collect one of these guys, Metal Jesus, that's his name. Uh, which is just a cool name for a YouTube channel. Uh, and even so, it's like, hey guys, Metal Jesus. Which is like, that's a dope-ass name. That's a, like, that's a cool stage name. But I, I don't know. if I It's had, no Joe Exotic. It's no Joe Exotic. If I had a, a YouTube channel, I don't know if I'd go by like a fake name like that or not, but... Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like retro video games, I've always like had this fascination with like the Game Boy from back in the day. I thought it'd be cool to like maybe collect old Game Boys, like buy them off eBay. And maybe they don't work, and then repair them and try and see if I can get them in working condition and sell them back on eBay. I don't know, just something fun. Because there's a couple YouTube channels I follow that do things like that, and I've always found it so interesting. I wanted to get into that, like repairing electronics and uh, you know, learning to solder and stuff like that. So. That would be my number one. Okay. What about you, Taryn? So my number one, I think, I don't know if I'd call this a hobby. I think it's more of a skill than a hobby. Well, if you do it for fun, it can be a hobby. Well, Unless it's like surgery or something. <laughs> <laughs> right? Otherwise. I mean, I mean, there are people, I'm sure, who do things like that as a hobby. Sure, but we're not. But we're not we're that not, kind of podcast. That's a we're not a true crime, crime podcast. podcast. Yeah, um, I would like to learn another language. Wait, but that was my number. That was my number five. Now you're telling me that's not a hobby. No, 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 no. Specifically speaking, I would like to learn ASL, which is American Sign Language. Exactly. What about Canadian Sign Language? Not even patriotic. Well, I don't know enough about the. Uh, there's just a couple out. extra symbols for poutine and stuff. It's pretty much the same. I know a little bit of it. Of Canadian Sign Language? Of No, of ASL. Is CSL even a thing? I, I see. I don't know. Maybe it is. Anyway, sign language, yeah. Um, I can sign my name. I, knew, I know a few random words here and there. Um, but I think that it's a... And I don't want to say it's a hobby, but um, I think it's a skill that... Uh, is important because the world needs yeah, to be but a more it was accessible. Top five place. Hobbies. Okay, well, I changed mine to skill halfway through. <laughs> you can't. You can't do that. Okay, well don't then. Work that way. Maybe hobby just. Nope, you can learn it only link. as a okay. hobby. All right. So you can learn it, but it's only a hobby. Okay. Well, actually, actually, I came to a realization earlier that if I ever had like another career, maybe I'd want to be a ASL interpreter. Do you have to be certified to do that? Yes. Do you remember a couple years ago? Was it at like Nelson Mandela's funeral or something? Oh, there was that guy who yeah, wasn't yeah, even yeah. a real. He was just making stuff he was just up. Making stuff up. I can't remember what the event was, but I think yeah. it might have been like Nelson Mandela. For some reason, I think it's Nelson Mandela's yeah. funeral. I don't remember. But you know what? Like, there's been all these coronavirus like briefings and stuff going on, like. Prime Minister Trudeau has come out and, you know, like talked to the, like given an address to the public, I think like, I don't know, six, seven days in a row now or something. Very first one he did, I saw some comments like, oh, why is there no sign language interpreter? So then sure enough, everyone since then has had one. Well, it's important to have. Sure. We can all do better to make the world a more accessible place. I don't think. That sentiment has ever been expressed on the Scruffcast before. Well, and did you say to make it a more acceptable place? We're making it more accessible. 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 We're making it accessible by having the Scruffcast available on every podcast platform there is. Oh, what a segue. (laughs) Yes, that's a great segue. If you listen on Spotify, you listen on Apple Podcasts, listen on YouTube, you listen on Google Podcasts, Google Play, we're there. What's what, what else is out there? What's that one? Speaker? Spreaker? No, what's it called? Stitcher? Stitcher. That's the one. That's the one. Yes, we're even on Stitcher, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and wherever we are, if you're listening there, oh, we're on YouTube. If you guys listen on YouTube, yeah, click the thumb up. And I've been going on the YouTube channel and then on the recent videos, and I've been leaving comments to our own video recently saying, like, what'd you guys think? 
Let us know. Email scruffcast at gmail.com. And I even pinned the comment. Uh-huh. None of you jabrones. Write in. I mean, some of you did, but none of the ones that I that listen on YouTube. Well, because you're berating your viewers. What do you mean we're berating our viewers? You're yelling at them. I'm yelling at them because they're letting me down. And you know what? It's the end of the world, okay? We need to perk everyone up by providing the Scruffcast, so we need you guys to write in to scruffcast at gmail.com. Taryn. Yes. How do you feel? At the end of your very first time podcast. This is the end? That's a great movie. Yes. This is, well, we finished the top five. You really are unfamiliar with the show. After the top five, it's five minutes of selfless promo, which we just kind of went through. And then we usually wrap it up. Oh, no. Why? You want to keep going? Yeah. You had a fun time? Well, Dan, I tell you what. You better buy some masks and uh, brave that pandemic because Taryn's out looking out here to steal your show. And steal your man. So... Yeah, any any uh any parting thoughts? Any closing thoughts, Taryn? Um Well thank you for having me on. I'd say any time, but it took a, literally a worldwide pandemic to get you on the show. I, and that's <laughs> <laughs> So take that for what you will. Yeah, I I never thought it was gonna happen. I never thought you'd ask me. Yeah, I mean Um I- Ian but doesn't I said live yes too far, the podcast, but so Ian doesn't live too far, but we just can't risk it. No. We can't risk it. No. Um, otherwise, Ian would have had you up here for sure. Well, if this is my first only and last time on the podcast, uh, I had a good time. Did you? I did. Uh, I enjoyed the experience. Would you recommend it to others? They could say, oh, I had a great experience. Yes. I will even leave a comment... And say I had a great experience. <laughs> no, you uh, have to leave comments and pretend you're not the person who's on the oh, show. Okay. And be like, All wow, right. ha ha, this was so funny. Uh, yeah, that Taryn. Oh boy, she was uh, something else. She was something. She just only, changed the top five halfway through. I will only tune in if she's part of it. Now, if we get a comment like that, we know it's from you. Because the listeners tune in for me and for Dan. But we know Dan can't do the show without me because, well, A, the studio is here in my home. And B, I'm the one who knows how to upload and edit and do all the podcast. Well, Dan can edit the podcast. He used to long ago. Then once we shifted things over, I've done all the editing and the thumbnails and 90% of the work. Mm-hmm. Dan's the talent. Yeah. So that'll do, I guess. Taryn has a little bit of a tear in her eye. She doesn't want it to end, but sorry to say, that's the end of the show. So... I always forget when Dan's not here to do the outro. I always forget how to end it. Do you want me to do the outro? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll let you do the outro this week. Okay. So how do I do it? Oh, I thought you were gonna like bring your own. Oh, I gotta. Okay. Like, come up with your own all thing. Right. Don't get all I like channel my improv skills. <sighs> yeah, don't get all like Dan Rather on me, like, like uh, like you good, know, like some good night and good luck. Yeah. Okay. Just, I'll try and keep it positive. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope that I uh, lived up to the legend of Dan. Yes. Um, take care. Be safe. Wash your hands. And uh, please, please, if you're going to do anything this week, please watch Tiger King on Netflix. Oh, as I'm watching go all out. Thinking this, oh damn that bad thing I can tell you're really good at distracting Going on this podcast has not been good for our relationship